I want you to look with me then at verse 2. It says this, Those who have believing masters must not be disrespectful on the ground that they are brothers. Rather, they must serve all the better since those who benefit by their good service are believers and beloved. So at first he was talking about all owners, whether or not they were believers or whether they were believers. But in verse 2, he singles out a special group. He says, now listen, if your boss is a Christian, don't treat him in any uh, different way because he is a Christian and you think you can get away with it. I would say it this way. Show your saved boss respect because it benefits a brother. Show respect to the boss who is a believer because he is a brother. I had to think about that term, that, that word brother for a minute. I have one brother, and he's two years younger than me. And we didn't always show respect to each other. We fought, and we argued, and we were very competitive. And sometimes it's like, Oh, I don't get along with my brother at all. In fact, sometimes I would say I, would, I get along with other boys better than my own brother. And sometimes we do that in the church. We say, well, because he's my brother in Christ, I can get away with this. Or because he's my brother, he'll understand. He's a brother in Christ, so he, he'll forgive me. He said, that should not be your attitude. If you have an employer, or in their case, a master, who is a believer, please do not be disrespectful to them because they are brothers in Christ. Uh, I, over the years, I played a lot of basketball. Basketball was my favorite sport. So after I got out of college and then and came home to farm, or even while I was in seminary, I, I would play in different basketball leagues, amateur leagues. And I would say to you that sometimes playing in a church league where all of the, the basketball players were believers, was harder than playing in a non-Christian league or a city league. It seemed like, and I, I can't explain to you why, but in the church league where everyone was supposed to be a believer, we were meaner to each other, we were harder on each other, and the attitudes were poor, and I was like, what is wrong with this? And yet when I would go into a place that was a city league or just go play out on an outdoor court with some people in the city, I would have a better re relationship with it. Why? Why is that? Why do we treat our Christian brother sometimes worse than we do our non-Christian brother? I think it's something for us to consider very seriously. The slave and the master had both trusted Christ. They became part of the church, and he said, Now, do your work as unto the Lord. Honor them. Show them the respect that they deserve. Timothy, please, talk to these people. Tell them that to honor the Lord and to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they need to live this out in their faith. Maybe on Sunday, they would both come to church. So the slave family is walking in the church. And here comes the owner and his family. The owner and his family were wearing very nice clothes. They had more money. So their clothes were very nice. The wife's hair was beautiful. She looked fantastic. And the children all wore perfect clothes. And here comes the slave family. They were making enough money to get by, but they didn't have as much money as the owner did, so they came in, and their clothes were not new. They were as clean as they could be. The wife was dressed modestly and appropriately, but not fancy like the Christian wife was. And the husband was, you know, he, he was comfortable with what he was wearing. So both families come into the church. Both families sit down. The slave owner and the slave look at each other. And if their relationship was good, they could smile at each other and maybe wave, and they could join in worship together, and they could praise God together, because in Christ, because of their identity, they were equals. But if there was some discord, if there was some disharmony between the two, it would affect the worship in the church. The way that they, they fellowship with each other, the way that they worship together, Paul is simply saying this, Timothy, please, make sure that the slave is showing honor and reverence for God by serving his employer in a respectful way because they're brothers. In fact, he says, they must serve all the better since those who benefit by their good services are believers and beloved. Because that person is a believer, you should say, I, I want that person to do well in his business. I want them to be a success. 
because I know that their heart is dedicated to God. I know that the profits that they make, they will use to spread the gospel, that they will share their resources. I want to be a part of that. Those of us who are employees, think about that. You say, you know, I, I wish we had more money to give to missions. I, I wish we had more money to give to the church. I wish we had more money to give to the poor. But you know something? I work for a Christian boss. And if his business is successful, and if his business is making money, and if his heart is right with the Lord, he has the ability to give in ways that I cannot. That instead of being jealous and saying, oh, I wish I could, and since I can't, I have a bad attitude towards him, I then become a better employee because then my boss will be able to give more and to do more for the cause of Christ. Because he's a brother. I go back to my relationship with my brother. After I got out of seminary, I went home and I, I farmed with my dad and my brother for 12 years. One of the struggles that we had was that all three of us were perfectionists. That means we all like things done in a certain way. That's very difficult when you have three perfectionists together. We each say, I want to do it this way, I want to do it this way, and I want to do it this way. And I look back on some of those times and the way I treated my brother, and now I go, why, why did I do that? Why did I treat him that way? I wouldn't have treated him that way if he had not been my brother. When we take that attitude into the church, and we say, because he's my brother, I can be harder on him. I can be tougher on him. We actually do damage to the fellowship of the church. That maybe, maybe as you're listening to this or watching this, you say, you know, I have had hard feelings against a brother or a sister in the church. I have been jealous. I have been envious. I wanted what they had, and I knew I couldn't have it. So the way that I got even with them was to be bitter against them. And when we have that attitude, we don't understand the damage that we do to the gospel witness of the church. I think back of Jesus, whose attitude was always right. I think of the verse in Matthew 20, 28, which says this, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for men. Jesus Christ didn't come to be served, even though he was the King of kings and Lord of lords, even though he was the creator of the universe. He came to earth in human form and he says, I'm not here to be served because of who I am. I am here to serve and to give my life as a ransom. Sometimes we hurt the ones we love more than those we care less about. He says, I want the church to be known as a place where it's a place of safety, it's a place of love, it's a place of harmony, it's a place of joy. But when we have issues with our brothers and sisters, we damage them. One author said it this way, true service is Christ-centered. It leads us to Christ, and it makes us like Christ. True service is Christ-centered. It leads us to Christ, and it makes us like Christ. TVS is a perfect way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support our educational and outreach ministry today. We exist solely upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvseminary.com. So in wrapping up these first two verses, what practices can we exercise as Christian employees, whether our boss is a Christian or not? Let me give you a couple of more. Number one, work hard. Work very hard. If your boss is a Christian or he's not a Christian and he observes that you're not doing your best, that you're slacking off, and that you're not giving it your best, that becomes a detriment to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we should be known as people who work and work hard. Number two, 
Pray for your boss. Pray for his family. Again, whether he's a Christian or not, pray for him. Pray that he'd be wise with his time. Pray that he'd be wise with his money. And if he's not a believer, pray for his salvation. Pray that he sees Christ in you and that one day he asks you questions about your faith and you have a chance to share about Christ with him. Third, have a Christ-like humility and forgive as we were forgiven. That every day when we go to work, we have a humble attitude just as Christ had to say, Lord, I'm here to serve you today. Whatever my boss asks me to do, as long as it does not conflict with who you are and and my own integrity as a Christian, I will do it. Help me to show a humility. Help me to show a servant attitude just as your son Jesus Christ did. And Lord, help me to be able to forgive him when he mistreats me. Help me to be able to forgive in the same way that you have forgiven me. That's the power of the cross. Can a church be a living testimony to the grace of God? Yes, it can. Can those of us who have jobs and work for employers testify of the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ? Yes, we can. In many great and practical ways. Well, that's the fourth and final group of people that Paul gives instructions to Timothy about. When we come back, we have some more to talk about as Paul begins to wrap up this first letter to Timothy. So let's take a short break. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150 or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300. Or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift 